So Tyrese Maxey, although I wouldn't say he's had the greatest performances in that last game last night during the preseason, I feel like he can really be the key to saving the 76ers from what almost feels like an inevitable rebuild. I mean, not going too much into my personal opinions on the situation, I just really don't see people talking about the Sixers being a championship contender, even at all. I feel like they still have a really talented roster. They've got Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Danny Green. They do have Danny Green, right? <laughs> Let me see. I'm on the wrong page now, aren't I? Um, I'm sorry about this. Yeah, looking at this roster right here. Actually, I think it's Celtics roster, isn't it? Yeah, Denny Green, um, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid. Actually, that's not on screen, is it? <laughs> the main thing about them is that when you take Ben Simmons off the court, who's their offensive initiator, and can they actually get some real spacing going on? You know, because Ben Simmons... He isn't the greatest of three-point shooters, and it's hard to argue that Joel Embiid's a knockdown three-point shooter. So let's get some spacing in there. What happens? And I think Tyrese Maxey's that guy. Although he was four for six with shooting no threes, he got eight points in 12 minutes. We know he's a shooter. We know he can shoot the ball, and that really can be the key to fixing this team, making this team into an actual contender. So, like and subscribe, let's talk about Tyrese Maxey. So, Tyrese Maxey is being brought onto this team to be a scorer. And, not just a scorer, I think Tyrese Maxey is very well-rounded. He's a good defensive player. Well, I mean, he's not, he's not like a weakness on defense. He can handle the ball, he can pass the ball to an extent. And, he's not really being played off of the court. He is a guy who can always stay on the court. And that's a good thing, because you might be looking at him being a guy who's going to play a whole lot of minutes for this team. But the main thing about him is he's an offensive, an offensive initiator. He can, I mean, he can, he's relevant when he has the ball in his hands. Main question is how good can he be, even just in his first season in terms of scoring the ball, making offense happen, finding open teammates, and... Yeah, I mean, just shooting efficiently, because he is going to be playing on a high-level team. He needs to be shooting efficiently. So that's the main things we're looking at Tyrese Maxey. Can he hit the three? We don't know. He was zero for zero. I mean, I was watching his highlights. I did not watch all of his shots. I did not watch all of his drives. But from what I in what I saw in the highlights, he did not even... You know, he didn't shot fake. He, I don't even think he set his feet once for a three-point attempt. So, that might be a product of not playing with great spacing. Or a product of, you know, maybe he just wasn't feeling like a three-point shot tonight. But, I do hope that he's able to hit the three ball. And looking at Shake Milton, that's the guy who, honestly, is filling a pretty similar role to Tyrese Maxey. We're talking about a guy who's consistently dropping big numbers with Ben Simmons off of the court in Shake Milton. Shot 3 for 6 from 3, 8 for 14 from the field, and dropped 19 plus 11. Also had 3 assists and 4 rebounds. It's a guy that Tyrese Maxey is going to have to compete with if he wants those minutes as that scorer, as that ball handler. Whether it be coming off the bench or in the starting lineup, he's going to have a direct competition with Shake Milton. Shake Milton, at this point, looks like the better offensive player. Tyrese Maxey does have the upper hand on the defensive end, though. And, I don't know. Which of the two do you pick? I feel like Tyrese Maxey's got a certain composure to him. I feel like Tyrese Maxey has more star potential out of the two. He's a guy who's shown some really brilliant flashes in high school and in college. Although, he wasn't terrible in college. He was being overworked. He didn't have the proper space and he needed to score the ball as efficiently as he wants to do. He didn't have the talent around him to score efficiently. And... I don't know. <laughs> He's just playing on that team. And... He had some pretty good games, but overall he's just solid. Actually, another good thing about him is Kentucky. Same school I just talked about right there. Kentucky is a basketball 
machine. They've turned so many good basketball prospects over the, fir in the last few years. Tyler Hero, Devin Booker, Bam Adebayo, Carl Anthony Towns, and so many more. Um, when we look at this draft, I'm pretty sure there were a few Kentucky players drafted. Um, we had Emmanuel quickly in the first round, along with Tyrese Maxey. And was there another one? Was there a third player? No, there was not. But I'm pretty sure there was another person on a two-way contract or something. I might be totally wrong. But, yeah, I mean, those are going to be two guys we're looking at. And Ty <laughs> the Kentucky player just recently have been extremely successful. I mean, we're looking at the guys who are currently in the league. Bam Adebayo, Eric Bledsoe, Devin Booker, Anthony Davis, De'Aaron Fox, Shea Jodos Alexander, Tyler Hero, you know, and Jamal Murray, I'd say they're big ones, Carl Anthony Towns, Julius Randle, they have turned out probably the best basketball prospects in terms of any school, any college that has sent players to the NBA, Kentucky is one of the ones where even if a guy's drafted late, you know that guy's probably going to be pretty talented. The Coach K scheme, getting guys, if they are playing a lot and they're playing well for Kentucky, then they're going to look great in the NBA. You know, he produces quality, qualities in his player that carry over to the next level. Regardless of how well they look compared to other players in college, it's really seemed like they perform at the same level as the top prospects in the draft, even regardless of where they're drafted, you know? Devin Booker, he's drafted late. Shea Gildas Alexander drafted relatively late. Tyler Hero, you know, who else? I guess um, Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray was drafted a bit late, and yeah, even P.J. Washington's been playing pretty well, I would say. Bam out of bio, why did I skip over that? Um, yeah, these guys, despite the fact that they're drafted late, they're always competing with the top you know, players in the draft, and we're talking about, what, how many years in a row <laughs> have they produced a player like that? Um, yeah, literally five years in a row. D-Book, Jamal Murray, Bam Adebayo, Shea Gildas Alexander, Tyler Hero. The first guy drafted out of Kentucky, actually that's a lie, PJ Washington was drafted before Tyler Hero, but pretty much the first guy drafted out of Kentucky for the last five years has turned into a great NBA player. So I think that's a pretty good sign. Actually, Jamal Murray was not the first guy drafted. Um, Scal Labissier was drafted before him. Um, but you get the point. Pretty much seems like the first guy drafted out of Kentucky turns out to be a pretty good player. Actually, I might have been totally wrong about that, what I just said about Jamal Murray. But... I'm double checking. I'm sorry. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, pretty much the first player drafted. I was totally wrong about Jamal Murray. The first player drafted out of Kentucky for the last five years has turned into an NBA superstar. And, well, pretty much a superstar. And Tyrese Maxey, he's got the qualities to do it. He's got all the strengths you need to be a star in the NBA. And he could really be the difference between... The Sixers roster just falling apart, and the Sixers roster making the playoffs. I still think he's got a lot more to prove, and this isn't like an overreaction to his preseason or anything. I just want to talk about him. He could be really great for the Sixers team, and he could really save them from going down to, I don't know what. <laughs> I don't think I can predict the future, but yeah. In terms of how he actually played in the bubble, I guess I didn't mention that. He looked composed, but he did still look a bit young. He looked like he was a bit out of place still. But that makes sense. He's only been practicing with the team for like two weeks, right? So, yeah, I know. That's the excuse that most people made for Anthony Edwards. And, come on. <laughs> this dude's drafted 21, and he looks pretty good. So, hopefully the Sixers drafted a gem. And that's going to be it for this video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.